In this video, I introduce convergence and probability. I prove something called the Chebyshev inequality, and then I use those two ideas to prove the weak law of large numbers. So let's start with a sequence of random variables. Each, each element of this sequence is a random variable, has a probability distribution, so we can compute probabilities. Our, our goal is going to be to define something called convergence and probability. And this is how we denote convergence and probability. This sequence of random variables, xn, converges in probability to some random variable, limiting random variable x. It, we could write out the delta epsilon definition of this, or we could sort of think about what it means. I, I want to think about what convergence and probability means, because it really isn't mysterious if you understand convergence of a sequence uh, to its limit. So, I'd like to translate the math of convergence and probability into the intuition of what the math actually means. So this statement here, this probability statement, shows up in our definition of convergence and probability. And all it really says is, on the left-hand side of this probability statement, we're taking the nth element of this sequence of random variables, and we're asking, well, how far is that from x? But because it's a random variable, what is the probability that this random variable is big? So that's what this probability statement is. We do this for uh, any epsilon bigger than zero. Bigger than epsilon means big, uh, smaller than epsilon means small. We ask, well, what's the probability that this difference is big? If this probability were high, that there'd be something different about xn and x that is irreconcilable. So, all we need to do for convergence and probability is ask, does this sequence of probabilities, does it converge to zero? If this sequence of probabilities converges to zero, then we know that xn converges to x in probability. Um, for a big enough n, xn is equal to x in, in the sense that there's no probability for any small positive constant, there's no probability of the difference being big. Let, let's take a detour into something called the Chebyshev inequality. Suppose that we have a random variable that is positive. Uh, it takes on all of its probability for x bigger than zero. If we want to compute the expectation of x, we could just write that out. I'm going to use continuous notation because it just makes a little bit uh, cleaner proof. And we're going to generate an inequality here. We could just integrate over a smaller amount uh, of the support. I'm picking epsilon to be some number bigger than zero. And I'm just saying, suppose that uh, We've got this number bigger than zero, and we want to integrate over a smaller part of the support. So if we're thinking that this is the density here, I'm leaving off uh, whatever the integral from zero to epsilon of x times this function is. But that's a positive number. If I leave that off, if I lop that off, all I'm doing is getting some bound on the expectation of x. Might not be a tight bound, but let's just see where this goes. Okay, so the next thing that we can notice is that um, for any x between epsilon and infinity, well, x is bigger than epsilon. So what we could do if we wanted to be really, um, really mean to this expectation and lop it down to size, is we could change all of those x's that are bigger than epsilon to epsilon. That's going to reduce the size of this, uh, of this integral. This epsilon is just a constant, so we can bring it outside of the integral. We're integrating uh, for every x that's bigger than epsilon, we're integrating over the density, and so that gives us the probability that x is bigger than epsilon. So now what we can do is we can string these equalities and inequalities together and get what is known as the Chebyshev inequality. That is, we just divide by this epsilon, and then notice that the inequality makes the expectation divided by epsilon bigger than this probability statement here. Now this is going to be incredibly useful in getting convergence results, because often it's easy to compute expectations of, say, positive random variables, but not so easy to compute, say, probabilities, uh, especially if we don't know the distribution of that, uh, of that random variable. If we can show that the thing on the right-hand side converges to zero, then this random variable here must converge in probability. So let's do an example, and this is actually one of the more important results in mathematical statistics called the weak law of large numbers. I'm going to put together the two ideas that we've talked about so far in this video, and we're going to prove the weak law of large numbers. 
Notice it didn't matter what this random variable was, just so long as this random variable was positive. That was the only thing that we used in, um, in the proof of, of the, of the Chebyshev inequality. So let's define some W that's a positive random variable. So I'm envisioning that I have a sequence of random variables, and uh, for the nth random variable in this sequence, I'm going to take uh, the first n, and I'm going to average them, and I'm going to subtract off the mean. To make this positive, I'm just going to square it. Now I'm also going to let epsilon equal delta squared. We can write out uh, the probability statement that Wn is less than delta squared. Uh, one thing we can do is we can do algebra inside of uh, of <clears throat> we can do algebra inside of the probability statement. And so one thing we can do is we can take square root of both sides here, and that's not going to change anything. So really, this probability statement here is the same thing as the absolute value of the random variable x bar n minus mu is less than delta. So let's go ahead and use this result. Our x bar n minus mu x uh, squared is w. By the Chebyshev inequality, the numerator is going to be the expectation of what's on the left-hand side here. There's a denominator, which is what's on the right-hand side here. From sort of previous results, we know that the mean of x is also the mean of x bar. And so we know that this, uh, this is actually the variance of x bar. And we also know something uh, very particular about the variance of x bar. That's the variance of the population, that's sigma squared, divided by n. Now delta has been held constant sort of throughout all of this. Just letting n go to infinity, it's not hard to see that this sequence of expectations here is going to go to zero. Now because the sequence of expectations goes to zero, and the expectations are bigger than this probability statement. The probability that x bar minus mu, that in absolute value, is less than delta, goes to zero for any delta that's bigger than zero. What we've just shown is that x bar n converges in probability to the population mean. And this is what is known as the weak law of large numbers, and it's a really important result because it tells us that the large sample properties of our estimator, x bar, are very good. Now I started off the video by calling this the weak law of large numbers. The weak refers to the fact that this is convergence and probability. This result actually holds even more strongly for a stronger type of convergence called almost sure convergence. The details of that proof are uh, significantly more complicated. If we were to show that, we would show the strong law of large numbers. For basic econometrics, weak law of large numbers is sufficient. Uh, a lot of the results that we'll have and a lot of the intuition that we'll get about our estimators will come from convergence and probability. So weak law of large numbers will be a real important result. Don't, don't discount it because we put a W there. Think of it as the law of large numbers. It's an important result and it's going to be fundamental to many of the results that we derive in econometrics.